Ready? Yep. <laughs> this video brought to you by Skillshare. Where did we leave off? This is probably the worst electric vehicle there possibly is. Oh yeah, the world's most worst paramotor ever with 50 drum motors, horrible duct design, and terrible efficiency. It's time to redeem myself by building a more better ducted propeller paramotor. you that saw the first video with the paramotor, I put the car before the horse and didn't optimize the ducts in the first paramotor and mainly the interaction between the propeller and the duct was done wrong. Bruh. Giving myself a criteria of using brand new off-the-shelf components designed for higher-end multi-rotors, I got these motors from Sunny Sky and this is the contraption I came up with. From various research papers I found, the key to using a ducted propeller set up with the maximum amount of efficiency is making the propeller have a real tight clearance towards the wall of the duct and also taking an oversized propeller, cutting it down so it has blunt edges and make that fit towards the wall. Basically the interaction between the airflow and the propeller tips is to reduce the amount of vortices or completely eliminate them in a ducted fan case. So what I found in this ducted fan test was, well, the numbers were actually just about right. I didn't really get quite as much as the university research paper, but they claimed 20% increase in thrust. I got maybe around 15-ish percent. I'm very happy with these numbers. Let's build the rest of the paramotor. I need to adjust the design a little bit. Oh, now it's big. I want it to be big. The reason why it's big, the total disc area right now is equivalent to a very large regular single engine, single propeller paramotor. Because the more air you move with the larger diameter propeller, the more efficient it generally becomes. And also becomes a little more quiet. Yeah, it's really bad. It's like the pizza analogy. Would you rather have two small pizzas or one large pizza? Well, basically you have to four small pizzas to have the equivalent of one large pizza when it comes to total surface area. <laughs> the issue with the four smaller pizzas is the amount of support equipment required is making it pretty heavy and paramotors have to balance in a certain place for them to really work. We have a slight problem. I've already moved the hang points as far as they can go back and it's still like this. I mean it might sort of correct itself because the thrust line is a little bit higher than the center point so it would kind of force itself over. But now I'm getting into a stage with too many possible variables. I don't really want that. So I think what I'm gonna do, because I did think about this, is taking that motor, putting in this duct, and making it coaxial. So there's one propeller rotating left, one propeller rotating to the right. So basically we're gonna make coaxial ducted fans. So I'm only gonna have two ducted fans and I'll have to just not use that set. It looks pretty crazy though. <laughs> So, now we're just on two ducts. We're out in a field because I need to see if I can inflate this wing with this giant doohickey on my back. I don't know whether if it's gonna clear that or not. I, I think it's gonna clear it. I think the strings will just go right around this and it'll be totally fine. Because the real thing to make sure is the strings don't tangle up inside the cage or, or the hoops in this case or end up where they shouldn't be. Hoopsie hoops are there. Let's see what happens. You have to get caught in that thing. Okay, I'm just gonna put it down. Okay, so I need to fix that real fast.
Okay, well, we take the good just fly now. So, if I had some power, we would just go straight in the sky. Definitely don't want to let go of these when I should get the motors running. We need to do a quick power test. Then we can go to Florida and try to fly this thing. So I'm going to plug it in now. Oh, where are my safety glasses? I suppose we should do a quick thrust test. test finally out of the way, which wasn't very conclusive, let's head to Florida, where it's a little bit greener and the weather is much warmer. So the last important thing we need, tourniquet. Well, it turns out my original plan of using duct tape to keep the lines out of the side of the hoops isn't gonna work. Luckily, I found these pieces of carbon in the trash. Let's tape them on and try to use them as line guides like they do on these paramotor trikes. Alrighty. It's another day, another attempt. now and this thing is kind of like wobbling left and right I think it might have been my launch well the nice thing is it's really smooth up here I mean it's not vibrating any more than my other electric one and it's much smoother than my gas unit well we're gonna keep cruising around and buzz my friends where's your paramotor well I'm not really wearing ear protection right now so it's very very loud and very very awkward I forgot to put earplugs in because you know I was under the illusion of an electric machine being quieter but this is clearly not the case with these ducks making all these noise. Other than that, it handles like a regular paramotor. You just have a little more inertia on your back so you can start developing a swing. Now there is the possible chance of torque twist, which one side's motors completely die, but that's very unlikely, so we don't worry about that. But the battery's going to die, so let's come in and land. <laughs> oh, it flew. <laughs> Oh, I didn't get my hands cut off. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. Woo, it flew great though. Well, sort of great. I have, I have no baseline of comparison, except my first death trap, which didn't fly very well. This is a little bit better. It still takes a lot more throttle than I thought it would. I just want to come around and land because I don't want to push it because I have no idea how long these batteries will actually last. And I really don't want to run to the barbed wire coming around for final. First flight success. I'll take it. I have successfully flown and I have not rubbed my fingers with these scary open face propeller ducks. I really need to put cages on this, but that'll happen later. Now it's time for this thing to follow the tradition of the last paramotor I built and let all my friends fly without letting me fly.
see your fingers. Make sure they're all there. <laughs> nice. I did it. I did it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> so my friends are having a great time with this thing. I'm watching them fly it all around. And now it is much better than the first one because I only had a handful of people fly it because of just the weird nature of it. This one, still weird. Like one of my friends, Alexis, she had to be pulled into the air because this thing is so heavy and awkward and I just don't want people starting the motors when the lines are slack because you could probably put your hands into the propellers and munch them, which wouldn't be a great day. <laughs> nice job, what'd you think? That thing is so cool. <laughs> For me, learning a new skill set is part of my daily life. I just learned how to paramotor a few months ago with my friends here. Learning to fly paramotors is like any other skill. It takes lots of practice. That's why I'm just happy to say Skillshare is our sponsor for this video and I need more practice. <laughs> learning a new task is usually no easy feat. Besides the repetition and practice, having access to high quality instruction and training is a surefire way to get the most out of your time. Skillshare has thousands of courses to choose from. I've seen others showcase how to make YouTube content, how to Photoshop, and how to video edit. But for me, I've went through the Skillshare's catalog and I've looked up how to 3D print, how to design a Fusion 360, and how to train my dog. All of which I use daily on the channel. The best thing about Skillshare is when you're learning your tutorial or new skill, is that it's an ad-free experience. Nothing is more annoying than when you're knee deep in learning something new and you have to click skip ad. Skillshare is always updating their library with premium brand new content so you never get bored if you want to just learn something outside your skill set, even if you're curious. And the entire catalog of content is available with subtitles in multiple languages. The cool offer I have today is for the first 1,000 people to use the link down below, you will get one month's premium access to Skillshare to check out all the content today. So whether you're someone who's a hobbyist or a professional, Skillshare is a great personal investment in you, so check out the link below and get started today. It looks like I sort of redeemed myself because we have a more useful, practical paramotor. Ready? Yep. <laughs> that could have been your fingers. I haven't really put that many batteries on yet, and I've never actually flown it to the battery cutoff because I'm just paranoid about things. But roughly, I have to project about a 15 minute flight time right now with these smaller batteries but they're only like 10 pounds of battery, so it's really not even that bad when you all things considered. I really like the ducks because they look cool and they give it a unique sound. It sounds kind of like a blimp. But they do add a little bit of weight. Each duct is around two pounds, which is weight I have to launch and run down the runway with. Another shortfall was that I wanted four giant ducks to get clean air to all four propellers for more surface area. Unfortunately, we had to go to this coaxial design and I just stuffed the other motor in the back to get the same amount of thrust Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way and you do take efficiency losses, mainly because the front propeller is accelerating clean air into the back propeller, which is now doing with this turbulent air that's already accelerated. And my main issue was the rear propeller was the same pitch as the front propeller, which means it's trying to accelerate already accelerated air so it doesn't really do anything. So by the time we landed and checked the batteries, the rear set of propellers and motors had about 20% more capacity than the front ones. So the front ones would always die before the rear batteries. I now have a more useful paramotor that still needs some design tweaks such as propeller choice, but it's a good start. I ended up leaving that thing down in Florida where my friends have attached it to a trike and apparently they're flying it without me. Some say to this day, it's still cruising the Florida skies till the battery dies or one of them loses a finger. Anyways, that's the end of the video. <laughs> it appears I've just made a really cool go-kart instead. <laughs> Alright, who's next?